What's up? It's me, ya boy, Bryant the Chinchilla, here with another motorsport video. Except this one's gonna be a little bit different because, you see, I'm not the one going out and trying to find footage for a motorsport video. I am the motorsport video. We made it, baby. We actually did it. Now, recently, well, actually a few months ago, I got the opportunity to go out and drive a NASCAR late model, which, if you don't know what that looks like, it looks like this. Now, with my limited experience and literally only making videos on YouTube and doing a bunch of other little side projects, you might be asking yourself, Brian, how did you get to drive this? Well, funny you should ask. For my birthday last year, my parents got me a gift to go to the Rusty Wallace race experience, which if you don't know what that is, they basically teach you how to drive one of these things, which is pretty cool. Um, they give you an opportunity on whatever track they hosted at, which in this case was Stock 99, and yeah, you basically get to go out and drive it around, and you can go as fast as you want, as long as you don't wreck it, but I got that opportunity. And only having driven, um, and only having driving experience in two of the cars before, one of them being a Chevrolet HHR, and the other one being my current car, a uh, Nissan Maxima, it was a big jump between my Nissan Maxima to a NASCAR late model. Now, there's a lot that I can go over, and I'm gonna do it, and if you're disappointed by having to listen to my voice, I'm sorry, but you're probably going to be disappointed by my driving too, because it was pretty slow. Um, so yeah, this is this is my experience here. So they told me, so I didn't know how to drive one of these things. I'd never driven a clutch before, I'd never driven a manual before, nothing like that. My Nissan Maxima is an automatic. So they told me to go out there and basically told me to release the clutch and drive and I, <laughs> I dumped the clutch. Um, yeah, it, but admittedly, first time driving a clutch, and um, I feel like I was going to embarrass myself one way or another, and starting it off early. So they had me restart the engine, and I do that, as you can hear there. So I restart the engine, and they tell me instead to slowly release the clutch as you slowly press the gas pedal. So I decided to do that and be very careful about it, and as you can see, I didn't dump the clutch this time. Now, I wasn't out of danger yet because I did have to shift when I got onto the front stretch and got up to enough speed, which, I mean, anything could go wrong there, and, uh... Surprisingly, I didn't stall it. So, I'm out on track, and I'm good to go. Now, these first few laps are extremely slow because I didn't want to be that guy to spin out or wreck the car as soon as I got out there. I really, really was nervous. Despite having the insurance plan, which basically covers um, if you wreck the car, you only have to pay $1,000. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of trying to get a feel for it. I don't want to just mash the gas pedal down and be that guy that wrecks the car, which, yeah, I mean, there was that guy earlier in one of the other sessions a few hours before us. So yeah, I was trying to avoid that as best as I could. Now, I'm out on track and I'm trying to get a feel for the car and I'm not really going fast at all. In fact, the spotter in my ear is telling me to go faster because I'm not doing that. But in the meantime, I'll tell you about the experience and at the end, I'll let you have some laps of just the engine noise and me running my laps. So one of the first things that you notice when you get into the car is of course you have to climb in through the window, which I mean, it wasn't a big deal, but considering I have the body style of Groot, I had very long limbs that I was trying to sneak in there. It was like a spider trying to crawl through a little little hole. So, um, I mean, I eventually get through there and, you know, get my lanky butt say, put in the seat. And they strap me in and they put on the helmet and everything. And sitting in the car, the first thing that I realized was that the windshield was very small. I mean, these cars are very short compared to like regular street cars, and that's just because of the style of them. And most race cars are that way, but it's very weird getting into the car and having the top of the roof line just barely above where the corner, where the top of that corner is. Um, so very odd experience because yeah, in a street car, you have to see the street lights and the stop lights, but in these cars, you don't have that. So the roof line can be much lower. Um, the other thing that I noticed in the car um, when I was out driving it was 
just how much you have to use your body. Um, compared to like your regular streetcars, like my Nissan Maxima has power steering. These late models do not have that, so you're really trying to crank the wheel to get it to move and to get the tires to turn. And, you know, that's good and all, but it does, you know, start to wear on you after some time and <laughs> gives me a, a much better appreciation of the guys who actually go out there and race these things at full speed. Um, because I was really using up my arms and I was like, oh man, this is... I finally experienced what it was like. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that the brake pedal, well, the other thing that I noticed is that the brake pedal is very, very difficult to press compared to regular streetcars. Because regular streetcars, you know, you can press down that gas pedal pretty, or that brake pedal pretty easily. In a late model car, you really have to press your foot down, you really have to stamp on it to get it to stop properly. And, you know, I got it worked out, and things eventually started speeding up as I figured out the car more. And you'll notice on the track these lines, the green line and the orange line, and the boxes with the big X's in them. So I'll go ahead and explain that really quick. So the way that I explained it was, in the corners, they expect you to stay in between those two lines with the green on the left and the orange on the right. The green X is where you're supposed to accelerate, and the orange X is where you're supposed to brake. Now, of course, in regular competition, you're getting on the gas a little bit earlier, and you're probably getting on the brakes a little bit later. Um, but this is just to make sure that there's a fail-safe, you know, hey, this is probably the smart idea if you've never done this before, and that was me. So I'm going through these corners pretty slow at first, and I, well, pretty much the entire way through I'm going pretty slow. But I do pick up some pace, and I do get a better feel for the car, I do accelerate more, and, you know, it overall was a pretty fun experience, and I knew that I could have pushed myself more, but I didn't want to risk it once again. I didn't want to pay a thousand dollars, and I know just how expensive these cars are. Yikes. Um, so yeah, it was it was really, really different to being in a regular street car, and it was something that I'm very glad that I experienced because, you know, after being a racing fan for 17 years, finally getting this experience was pretty cool. And one of the things that you'll notice is on the front stretch here, the sun, that was difficult because during the during the run, I couldn't see the track. I was just staring into the sun, essentially. It was just blinding me as I was going into turn one, and that was a unique experience. Um, so yeah, I did end up having some moments of just, uh, where am I going? Where am I hitting the brakes? And I kind of just had to rely on trying to find the outside wall and realizing when the corner was coming up to actually hit the brakes because I could not see any of the lines on the track. Um, but yeah, it was it was something that was very unique. And for the time being, that's pretty much all that I want to say. So I'll go ahead and let you guys enjoy these next few laps just purely on its own sound.
So that was it for my race experience at Stockton 99 Speedway. It was a lot of fun getting to experience that unique driving style of a late model car and to have that knowledge of what it's like to be in a car like that and compared to my 2018 Nissan Maxima. So I mean, definitely unique unique stuff, and I promptly stalled the car as I get in because I didn't know how to properly stop the car. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was a bit of an embarrassment, I guess is what I would say. Probably not, actually. I wouldn't say that. Um, I was glad that I wasn't that guy who wrecked the car on the first lap. I wasn't that guy who spun it. I wasn't that guy who, you know, made laughing stock out of himself. But... I wasn't the fastest out there, and getting out of the car, I knew that I could have gone faster, I knew that I could have pushed the envelope even more. I felt comfortable in the car when I was driving around the way that I was, but once again, I didn't want to risk anything that was unnecessary, and I didn't want to be the person to make a mistake out there when everybody else was running pretty smooth. But overall, I had a fun time, and if given the opportunity, I would totally do it again. So I mean, hey. I'm not getting paid for them, I'm not getting sponsored by this, but if you want to go out there and experience it yourself, I would say go out there, but a few things to definitely take away from this video to take with your own experiences. Clutch. You need to learn how to drive a clutch. I mean, the best way that I did it, the way that I did it was slowly releasing the clutch as I was slowly putting in the gas, um, or pressing down the gas pedal is what I would say. but. You know, it's it's a learning experience. It it just it all it definitely is. Um, but yeah, I had fun there. Got to experience a new way to drive, and that's pretty much all that I have to say. So, yeah, hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. I've got some good videos planned in the coming days. Well, hopefully, coming days. I'm getting to work on several different videos, especially some driving and motorsport ones that are coming up relatively soon that I'm putting a lot of effort into, making sure that I've got all the information down. So hopefully you enjoy those in the next coming days, and I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Bye!